Hi everyone, thanks for clicking and welcome back to my channel. Today, we will talk about our PAR approach, authorization required. And as usual, we will only cover the points that concern us pilots, without going into too much unnecessary details. Before we get started though, kindly consider helping the channel grow by subscribing and giving this video a like should you find it helpful. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. For better understanding, it wouldn't hurt if we start by shedding light on what's the difference between RNAV and RMP. RNAV and RMP navigation specifications are substantially very similar. They only differ in the relationship to the performance monitoring and alerting requirement which applies to RMP navigation specifications. This means that if the RMP system does not perform the way it should, then an alert should be provided to the flight crew. In practical terms, what this means is that air traffic control can have greater confidence in the track keeping performance of the aircraft and this great confidence translates into being able to place routes closer together. For an RNAV system to qualify as RMP, it needs to comply with the following two specifications. First and foremost, it must be able to achieve and maintain a specified accuracy for at least 95% of the flight time. This means that if you were to fly RMP2 for example, the aircraft must be able to maintain 2 nautical mile track system error or better for at least 95% of the flight time. Second, there must be an onboard alerting system that automatically alerts the crew should the accuracy or integrity degrades or for any other reason becomes unreliable. So a mean of monitoring and alerting system must exist. If the above two conditions are met, then we can confidently say that we have an RMP equipped aircraft. All right, let's look at the RMP approach now and here where it gets a bit confusing. Is it precision or non-precision? Well, it is not straightforward. Why? Because if we look at this approach, for example, we can see that under the RMP approach, there are multiple approaches we can choose from. LPV, for example, being localizer performance with vertical guidance is an APV approach, approaches with vertical guidance which if you want to fly, you must have an SPAS receiver on board. And by the way, for more in-depth explanations about SPAS, please check out the link above to a video where I explained all about it. Back to our topic, APV or Approaches with Vertical Guidance is a new category, in addition to the regular precision or non-precision categories. LNAV VNAV is also an APV approach. How about RMP LNAV approach? Well, this one is a non-precision. To give you a trick to remember them all, ILS, Precision Approach Radar, and GLS are all precision approaches. All other approaches that provide only lateral guidance, such as RMP LNAV, LP, Localizer, VOR, NDB, LDA, and so on, are all non precision approaches. Now, any approach that provides both lateral and vertical guidance other than ILS, PAR, or GLS is considered an APV approach. All right, let's have a look at some RMPAR approaches and see if we can spot anything in common. If you said all of them have curved approaches and happen to serve airports in challenging terrains, then you're right. And that is really the point of RMPAR. It was developed to serve airports with challenging terrains. Hence, the approach is not necessarily an easy straight-in terrain-free approach. Therefore, in order to be able to fly such approaches, certain minimum criteria must be met, for safety reasons obviously. Of which, crew qualifications, the crew must be trained and certified to fly those curved approaches with marginal clearance from surrounding terrains and mountains. Second, the aircraft itself must be certified to maintain and achieve the required accuracy with onboard performance monitoring system to alert the crew in the unlikely event of system malfunction in addition to other minimum equipment that must be on board, of which two GNSS receivers, two FMGS, two MCDUs, two flight directors, two autopilots, if RMP is less than 0.3 nautical mile for approach, or RMP one or less for misapproach, three ADRS, enhanced GPWS, or uh, enhanced ground proximity warning system, and a flight control unit panel. All right, now let's put all of this into perspective in order for you to fly an RMP approach, you need the following. First things first, an approval from the governing authority, 
in order to obtain this approval you need to be qualified and certified as a pilot to fly such approaches and obviously you need training then the aircraft itself must be certified in order for the aircraft to be certified the following minimum equipment must exist like we just said earlier a minimum of two GNSS receivers two FMGS two MCDUs two flight directors two autopilots if RMP is considered to be 0.3 nautical mile for the approach or better or RMP is less than one nautical mile from this approach and then three ADRS EGPWS and FCU. Next is an RF link segment might be used after the precise final approach fix. RF segment is nothing but a curved approach so the ability of the aircraft to maintain and fly a curved approach. And last but not least lateral track system error value as low as 0.1 nautical mile. When all of these requirements are met then and only then we can fly an RPAR approach because we must have already obtained the authorization that is required. All right, I hope this video has made the RPAR approach concept easy for you guys. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll be happy to answer you guys. Till next time, see ya.